So yeah, I get to talk to you about one of my favourite styles of beer, um, Oktoberfests, well, Marxons. Um, so, uh, in case there's any doubt, it's category 6A in the BJCB 2021 guidelines. Um, it's European multi-lager. Um, yeah, start off with the history. Um, so, Marz is March in German, so Marzen is a March beer. Um, so yeah, it was brewed in March and then lagered in the caves over the summer, ready for consumption um, come autumn, early winter. Um, modern versions are, um, well, I have some examples. So this is one of the more modern versions. Spartan is sort of um, supposedly one of the forebearer of the style. So it's very similar to Vienna Lager. Um, so Vienna Lager, Oktoberfest, Marts, and they're all in the sort of same category. Um, but yeah, um, traditionally, if prior to Spartan and the whole Oktoberfest, it just meant a strong beer. So 14 Plato's or above. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to convert that to OG. So anyone know their Plato off the top of the head? doesn't matter <laughs> but yeah basically a strong lager um, well, it's like uh roughly sort of multiply it by four to get gravity points so okay so, so it'd be 1056 for 14 yeah. plato yeah cool and yeah it's um unlike a lot of the modern fest beers um martin and the original Octo and october fests are amber in color rather than uh light and clear um and yeah, they were served at the Oktoberfest from 1872, from the inception all the way up to 1990. And then um, it more moved to the Golden Fest beer that is the standard these days. Um, so this is straight from the BJCP guidelines. Um, so it's an amber, multi-German lager, clean, rich, toasty, bready, malt flavor, restrained bitterness, and well-attenuated finish. Um, Overall malt impression is soft, elegant, complex, with a rich malty aftertaste that is never cloying or heavy. Um, basically designed to be drunk in volume. Um, if you want the specifics, um, yeah, so 1054 to 1060 OG, um, going down to 10, 1010, 1014. So strong lagers, 5663. Um, yeah, not very bitter at all, um, more on the more sweet end. And yeah, if you know SRM, it's eight to 17. And yeah, these are the sort of things we're talking about. Um, so you're in the BJCP guidelines, the um, classic examples are Spartan, Hackershaw and Paulana. Not sure what Paulana's in there. That's, that, to me, that's more towards the fest beer, but it's in there as one of the classic examples. Um, but all of those beers are really quite nice. So ingredients that make up a Oktoberfest. Um, according to the stuff I've been reading, traditionally it was literally just Munich malt and Pilsen malt. Um, these days, you a lot of homebrew recipes and some commercial recipes include um, some two-row or Vienna malt. Um, to add to the Pilsner and the uh, Munich. So yeah, you'd be looking like around 50% Pilsner uh, and 30% Munich. Um, I have seen some other examples where the Munich's much higher as well. Um, and then also a lot of examples include caramel or crystal malt, so caramel Munich or something like that, just to enhance the um, color and the overall body and sweetness. And then according to a study of um, Oktoberfest entries into the uh, National Homebrew Competition in America, people added in things like victory malt, aromatic wheat, and melanoiding, as well as extra low, lower volume malts. Um, Hop-wise, hop it's pretty straightforward. It's either going to be Tetanango or Halatau. Um, other noble hops like Saz, probably a bit too spicy. So yeah, stick to the um, straightforward ones on this. 
yeast wise um the most common ones are the bavarian strains um so it'd be the white labs oktoberfest uh even like the bock lager strain um less common uh, things like bohemian pilsner so um the pilsner Raquel yeast you can use it to make an oktoberfest it might not be exactly the right style but it will be close enough uh water profile wise yeah you're looking for soft or reverse osmosis water as a starter and then just add enough calcium and gypsum to um, give it some background um these um quantities are taken straight from one of james's recipes um so yeah four grams of calcium chloride and 1.3 grams of gypsum in around 22 liters of mash water and that will give you enough to give you a good profile and yeah the main thing is to keep the sulfur levels low process wise um yeah you're looking for a high fer fermentability um wort um just so it is dry and drinkable um so yeah you could go with a two two-step mash um mashing at 60 62 raise it up to 69 um or just a long single rest at around 65 66 um yeah 90 minutes maybe even two hours um i thought this was a decocted style but i can't find any references to decoction so obviously not i must have just imagined that uh sorry rob boil and hop schedule um some recipes i've found suggest a 90 minute boil um just to increase the color basically and yeah, as it's a malt forward style, it's literally 60 minute additions. Um, some recipes I found have a 20 minute addition, but they were from Americans and they were using like ridiculous things like mosaic and stuff like that. So I don't think that would make a very good Oktoberfest. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all, all the sensible looking recipes I found were straight up 60 minute additions of like 18 to 20 IBUs of um, uh, Tetananga or Hartel. Um, fermentation wise, straight up lager fermentation, really 10 degrees for up to two weeks. Um, again, looking at some of the um, National Homebrew Competition entries, this is all from the um, Designing Great Beers books. Um, some people suggested that they um, fermented as high as 14 degrees um, just to get a quicker ferment. Um, but yeah, they obviously didn't do as well as the 10 degrees. Um, examples and lagering traditionally yeah you're looking at quite a long time uh, six months um, but as we're probably brewing now and having in March three months is more than enough for a decent uh, lagering uh, yeah these little quotes from Ray Daniels in his um, Designing Great Beers book lagering seems to be fairly short for these styles um, and that a lot of the people entering, and this was like second round um, entries, um, they re didn't report lagering at all, they're up there, Martins. Um, but yeah, those who did report lagering, it was, as you'd expect, um, zero, 0 0.5 to three degrees, so almost freezing for four to five weeks, at least four, four to five weeks. So on to the recipes. Uh, so first one uh, is from uh, Brewing Classic Styles. Let me just buy a brew file. So yeah, this is from Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. Um, As you'd expect, it's it's just straight up uh, Pilsner malt, Munich malt, and Vienna malt, and then Hartau. Um, he puts some in at twenty minutes as well. Uh, yeah, and it looks like, looks like quite straightforward um, brew, really. Uh, mash for at sixty six for sixty minutes. Uh, boil for ninety minutes. Um, basic water additions. And it, he used the um, Oktoberfest Martin uh, lager yeast from White Labs. Um, and I calculated, yeah, you do like a two litre starter to get 
somewhere near enough yeast. But yeah, I'm pretty crap at lagers, so I'd probably take someone else's advice on that one. And then that one's got, that one's got a, it's a very pale beer for the guidelines mm. anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, when I was reading through it, it he would he was describing it as a fest beer rather than a rather than a Martin. Um, so I think this is more towards the more modern fest beer rather than the Martin. Whereas, um, yeah, James, did you want to talk about your recipe <laughs> rather than me taking credit for that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So my I, I looked around for recipes and they were all a lot of them were like, oh, we just, it was the, they used the bulk of Pilsner and then they're using the Cara Munich and various other bits. And I was like, that just doesn't seem like the German way of doing it. Mm. I don't think they would sort of. And, and then I had um, uh, a very good recipe book in general, the, the Modern Homebrew Recipes by Gordon Strong mm. um, has a, an Oktoberfest recipe in it, but it uses like, again, the use a mixture of pills and Vienna and Munich and then some dark Munich and some melanoidin and some Be Belgian aromatic and oh, just like no this this doesn't seem this isn't the simple way I was trying to I tried to move a lot of my brewing to, to be much simpler in the grist um, so uh, I think at the time I, was, I talked with Rob about this and uh, to sort of try and get an idea as to um, what, what sort of the, the best way of going was and in the end I'd settled on um, doing the sort of the bulk of it being Munich and Vienna. So I would get virtually all of the color from that with just a touch of Cara Munich. And I think in the end that the Pilsner was really just because I had it sat around um, more than anything else. Um, the, uh, so you, you could get rid of the, the Pils malt entirely. Um, oh yeah, I just had it there. Um, the previous version used a slightly to use the Barker Pilsner. Uh, the one thing I will say is do I, I really, really rate the the Barker um malt, malts from Wyman. Um they are got lots of flavour in them. Um they just require a little bit more time uh conversion wise. Um but yeah, so uh, the, the the majority of it was Munich with some and Vienna. Um I used RO water um with a the, some calcium chloride and gypsum um that was all it really needed to to i didn't do anything else with with ro water um and the first version of this um i made actually i didn't use the the although i've got the bot the german bock yeast the wlp833 on here um that was the first version of this i actually did it using the y yeast oktoberfest blend mm -hmm. um but i brought that to the meeting i think it might have been february because it had a weird fault in it and that there was this sort of slightly coffee taste or something like that in it and I eventually figured out after that having taken the feedback from the meeting as other people could taste what I was tasting in it mm. I eventually figured out that, that was actually because I'd left some sort of something charred on on the element in my kettle and that had obviously then transferred into the beer um so I'd got sort of left this slight roast taste in it that was not unpleasant but it was just a bit weird um, so I rebrewed the beer uh, straight away, and uh, Malt Miller didn't have the yeast I wanted to use, so I went for the the eight three three because that's pretty reliable. Lots of people rate it, um, and yeah, it turned out really well uh, from a judging point of view. Um, I enjoyed it. I just I think the Oktoberfest one was better because I think eight three three is very it comes across as very very rich and sweet. Um, and and for a pint of it, it was a bit much. I drank the whole keg, obviously, um, but uh, I, I I liked the the October first blend a bit more. So I would play around with yeast; they make a big difference on this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but other than that, I mean, it's um, uh, trying to look at the the rest of the figures I had for it. So did you do any was... adjustment of the mash for like pH and stuff? uh yeah the, the the calcium chloride in gypsum went straight into the mash in with the the with all the malt um and that was all i needed according to i used brewing water to calculate the um the ph from that so um can't really complain because it seemed to bang on in the end um yeah uh i mean it was uh said it 
I think in the end it over attenuated slightly, so it ended up at like six and a half percent strength, um, which I think is just slightly high on the high end, but that didn't seem to to harm it. Um, yeah, and then it it, it yeah, so it, it basically over attenuated, so it actually dried out to like ten oh eight in the end, um, which is quite low. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't taste that way. It tasted incredibly rich, and I was just like, "This is way too sweet." But I'll enter it in the, into lab open anyway because I haven't got anything else. And uh, yeah, it's called forty-seven out of fifty. So, um, what can you say? Um, I'd say it was amazing, James. Me and I touched that with uh, a guy who came over from uh, Germany, I think, and completely separately we gave it. We we kind of matched each other's scores. It was super amazing, got to say. And I wouldn't have thought of giving anything, something such a high score, but yeah, it was kind of faultless. It was that, uh, that must be that bark of yeah. uh, Pils was absolutely uh, amazing. It tasted so like fresh and deep, it was really, really good. Yeah, and I, I mean, I apply since sort of getting the, the, the knack of brewing sort of the hoppier beers and things like that, which come across, which you need to be very, very careful about oxidation. I've applied the same thing to a lot of other beers, and I think it really helps for something like this, where you just want the malt to, to pop. Um, I think that oxidation can affect that does affect the malt character quite a lot, malt freshness. Um, a lot of German breweries are quite obsessive over avoiding oxidation. Mm. Um, so I sort of do the same thing for all beers, and I think it, it helps. So good work. Cool. And yeah, there was a picture of it, which is up on the wiki. Yeah. And it looks good. Go and brew it. Yeah, um, that, that is my plan. I, I'm going to re order the ingredients and brew it. Are you going to brew it with the, the bock yeast or something different? Uh, I might, tr if I can get all the Oktoberfest blend, I'll, I'll try and use that, see how that goes. Um, and yeah, because I haven't brewed since like April, so I need to get something going. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, these are the sorry, references sorry, I use. Sorry, Dad, can I ask James a question quickly? James, you had some uh, lactic acid there. Uh, did I you know add that, it that was me the adding that. <laughs> no, <clears throat> didn't add any acid. It was pure RO water, and just I used the, the calcium chloride and gypsum in the mash, and that was it. According okay. to brewing water, uh, give me one second, I'll pull it up. Um, I don't think I bother measuring the pH. I Honestly, I don't often measure it these days. Um, but according to brewing water, just opening up the spreadsheet. Uh, there we go. Um, it was predicting 5.35 for the mash pH, so yeah. really don't need to add any anything else. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the difference with brew five. Yeah, it's predicting 5.4, which probably still fine yeah i i wouldn't I, I just i didn't see any need to mess with it any more than that it's like try it if it works then cool if not then i'd start looking to change things but cool as i said if i was doing it myself i'd probably chuck out the pills the malt i'm not even sure whether you need the caramunic in there honestly um but i would potentially just start with the the munich and the vienna and go from there and that, that was a straight um, single step mash, wasn't it? Um, yes, yes, it was. Um, yeah, just a 65 degree rest for two hours. Cool. And that's just because it was the Barker malt. Yeah, yeah, I just gave it a bit longer. And, and I, I suspect also I went out to walk the dog or something like that and then in the middle. So, uh... <laughs> cool. Right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me, unless anyone's got any more questions. No, I've I've um I've brewed probably one of the more Americanized recipes before. I think it was a brew philosophy one. It didn't go as far as the heretical 20 minute hops, but um but it had all the it had every malt in there under the sun. And uh yeah, I thought it was too way, way too rich and caramelly. And uh, than compared to the you know the classic versions, not nearly 
it didn't have that sort of clever palette trick of being you know big up front and then drying out it, it was just too yeah it was, it was cloying in the end um so uh i think the subtler versions with less malt are probably definitely like james they're definitely the way to start Yeah, I think you don't want to go like crazy with sort of Cara Munich and stuff like that. That you get a lot of richness from the from the Munich and Vienna on its own. I have a question, please. Um, Barker malt. What is that? I know Wehrmann, and I like their malt. It's very kind of flavoursome compared to some others, but I don't know about Barker. What's that? It's just another breed of barley, I think. So similar to Maris Otter is a specific strain of barley. Um, or you can have Flagon or we talked about Chevalier and the others the other month. Um, Barker is, I think, just a very specific, I think. Um, a variety, okay. I think. I, I don't know. Actually, thinking about it now, I'm going to have to go and look it up. Yeah, it's... Um, it's, well, it's, it's uh, uh, traditional sort of um if you will historical variety of barley that um, almost died out and but um, in germany they like like using because of that extra maltiness so it is a different cultivar i think okay. it is like also a registered trademark of wine I mean, which is why no you don't see anybody else selling it so <clears throat> okay Brent, thank you i'm gonna have one Cheers, Dan. 